Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the Yao Yao post-release analysis. As usual, for the post-release, we'll go through the pre-release video, we'll talk about what I got right, what I got wrong, and, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So we can get started on that already. Her E is gonna throw 10 radishes over 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. It will apply Dendro four times, and yep. it will generate either five or six particles, I'm not entirely certain. Let me actually just double check. One, two, three, four, five, five particles. Generate five or six particles. As it turns out, it is five. It seems to be a particle on every odd hit. So hits one, three, five, seven, nine. However, it doesn't generate particles if it hits you, which means that if you're standing far away from the enemies or like not that close to the enemies and you're low, and so the radishes are targeting you instead of the enemies, you might not generate as many particles, right? So that's a thing that is pretty important to keep in mind. If you're not playing a T that like needs to be very, very close to the enemies to deal their damage and you take some hits, it's actually gonna hurt your energy generation because Yao Yao is not gonna hit the enemies as often. Hang on whether it actually gets to the like 11th throw. Oh, which is it does not get to the 11th throw. It, it only does exactly 10. Her burst, as far as I understand, shares internal cooldown with her E, but lowers that internal cooldown to 1.5 seconds. Sure. Yeah, that does seem to be what it is. In total, you actually should be able to get about seven dendro applications per rotation. However, again, right, if you're in AoE, that seven dendro application can end up being staggered in such a way that if you're going for something like a Bloom team or a Virgin team, if you're against three enemies, you can actually get 21 different seeds at different moments, rather than just the 14 that you would usually get for characters that have like the, the, the normal AoE stuff, right? Like going back to what I said earlier in this video about because your AoE is really small, you can stagger your application on different enemies and effectively get more blooms or more virgins. Her healing is based on her HP. However, the numbers on it are actually kind of shit. It's not too bad in her burst, but outside of her burst, her healing is pretty not great. Yeah. So, okay, as you'll see th throughout the video, I kind of ended up realizing that her healing was good like halfway through. <laughs> I probably should have just re-recorded this, but I ended up not doing it. Either way, her healing from her E is really shit. It's there, it's fine, but it's, it's not much. Her healing in her burst, it's actually just insane. Because, okay, for the E specifically, right, like, the main reason why the healing is so bad is because, like, it's a fine amount of healing, but it's not unconditional. It's only going to target you if you're, like, low enough HP, and then even then, if it targets you, it's not targeting the enemy, so it might generate less particles, it might not apply as much Dendro. So, all in all, you, like, it's not really great healing from the E itself. But the burst, I mean, let me take a lot of damage on all of my characters and then just use her burst. <laughs> Ah, oh, fuck. And then let's use our burst. Right? So we healed basically our whole team. It wasn't like that much healing, right? Which is like, hmm, we only healed like what? A little bit over 10k HP on Yelan? She's level 80, her burst is level two, and she'll build ER Dendro Crit. This is literally less healing than a level 90 four piece instructor town level six CR. Like this amount of healing is enough to keep you afloat. Like it's more than enough. Anyways, her healing is a lot better than I gave it credit for here. Very hard to justify building her like full EM to take advantage of Dendro application in Nilo teams, because if you do that, you're kind of just not healing much. Yeah, so again, right, that was basically wrong. You definitely can get away with just building her EM. If you level her burst a little bit, you actually level her to 90, and you have a few HP substats, you're healing a very large amount. Also in our constellations now. A C1, when your radishes explode, you gain dendro damage bonus and regenerate some stamina. That's actually pretty useful when it comes to a Hytham teams and spread carries, but honestly, I don't expect her to be that great of an option for that. I yeah, would... she like she's fine with a Hytham, but it's just that you lose a lot by not going Nahida. Like it's still gonna be a fine team, but it is a lot worse. So generally, you'd rather run Kuki if you want a healer slot than Yao Yao. Uh, if you don't have Nahida, though, she's a pretty good, uh, she's a pretty good option for for a high thumb. But on un ironically, expect her to be a lot more popular in solo Dendro aggravate teams rather than double Dendro aggravate teams. Yeah, I mean popular, I don't know, because hard to tell, especially because people are playing on high thumb more right now because he just came out. I do think that she's better in uh, solo Dendro than double Dendro. 
Aggravate focus teams rather than spread focus teams. Yeah. C2 makes her radishes generate energy during her burst. This isn't bad, but the main thing is that her best weapon is five and her damage output is pretty shit. And her healing is so good that you don't really need to build her focused on healing, which means that in most teams, it's actually pretty easy to get more than enough ER, like way more than what you actually need because you don't, you're not sacrificing much for it. Uh, so her C2 is like, it's nice, but it solves a problem that isn't there basically. After using your E or your burst, her EM is increased based on her HP, up to 120 EM. In Yellow Bloom teams, unless you're using her with Kandaka, her the EM doesn't do anything. In Burgeon teams, the EM doesn't do anything. So it's either in for Nilo teams with Kandaka, in which case this is pretty okay, or in spread teams, in which case this is also pretty okay, but nothing crazy because he doesn't trigger that much spread. So, yeah, I, th I have to say that's fair. However, I definitely underestimated this. We'll talk about it more, don't worry, once we get to like team comps, but this is a lot better than I expected it to be. It, it, it is still right, it's just like it's a fine-ish constellation, but it doesn't do much. C5 is the burst damage. It's a bit better than C3, but it's still- It's also burst healing, right? Which is which is a thing that I kind of overlooked here, which again, right? If you're not building her for her healing, having a few more talent levels on this can help you get even more healing than you need. But like I said earlier, her healing is so good to begin with. And then C6- With her burst, with her burst. Her E healing still kind of sucks. Uh, for every two radishes that your E throws out, the next one will also release a mega radish up to two times. Basically, you get two additional radishes on your E, but those radishes do not share internal cooldown with the rest, which means that it's two additional dender applications in your rotation, mm -hmm. as far as I understand. But again, right, her application and her particle generation and all of this shit got changed so many times in beta that I'm honestly <laughs> not even entirely sure. Yeah. So it is it is two additional dender applications per rotation, which is pretty good. Well, the thing about it is when you look at a lot of the four-star characters with a good C6, like something like Farazon, for example, you, you have to keep in mind that usually you put a character on a team and it's costing you a team slot that could otherwise be occupied by someone else. When you look at someone like Farazan, someone like Sarah, someone like Goro, right? I mean, let's take Sarah for example, because I think she's the best example for this. When you put Sarah in a team with Raiden, uh, like a hyper team with like Bennett Kazuha, Sarah's damage is pretty shit. <laughs> like it's there, it's fine, whatever. But like the, the main thing she provides is the is the buffs. The thing is because you're swirling Electro and you have Bennett buff, you if you replace Sarah with a unit like Fischl, for example, you get a lot of damage out of that Fischl right so the buffs that you're gaining from Sarah what they're costing you is the damage that another unit put there instead would do the thing about Yao Yao is where you want to use her is generally in teams that care about having Dendro on the team and she doesn't really have competition in her role but right? because she's that healer generally you'd want to put Yao Yao on your team anyways in teams where you use her she's not competing like Sarah is competing with a unit like Fischl she's just like a, something you want to put in that team anywhere uh, anyways, and then that C6 just makes her even better. Uh, it is worth noting though that the application happens in very quick succession with the usual application on the first hit. Wait, no. They come out relatively close uh, in terms of time to when your baseline application is hitting, which means that in some situations, you won't have time to remove the dendro from this hit before the next dendro application happens, which means that instead of the potential two additional blooms that you can generate, if you're playing in a bloom team, you might only get one or even none. That being said though, most of the time it's still pretty good. Like it's, it's just, it's a nice constellation. As far as I understand, this is supposed to be separate ICD, if that's the case. It's a pretty nice constellation, but yeah. it doesn't change her gameplay in this. Yeah, like it doesn't change her honestly. gameplay. You still want her in the same kinds of teams, it just makes her a little bit better there. Probably the least constellation dependent four star we've had in a while. Yeah. Like her C1 is pretty good for spread teams. Her C4 is fine in some Nilo teams and any any Quicken teams. And then her C6 is pretty nice everywhere. But she is actually a pretty good unit at C0. Having those constellations won't change the way you play her. It won't make her a viable option in teams where she wasn't a viable option before. Her ER requirements are in general quite high, which is part of why I like Fabonius Lens on her just in general. However, like she's not that burst dependent. If you want her to deal damage, she is. And if you want her to heal like a lot, she is. But the reality is in a lot of teams, neither of those are that important. And you can just give her no ER because- Okay, so the team I'm talking about here is like mostly like the Quicken teams where she's not really burst dependent. and. and and that's fair in those teams, but she definitely is burst dependent in any teams that rely on uh, transformative damage. You look at Hyper Bloom teams, Milo teams, Virgin teams, she is burst dependent for those teams, definitely. But like I said,
dead, all right, because her damage is kind of shit to begin with, like her, her talent damage, and because her healing is actually really good, which is something that I, I don't think I had realized there. I think I ended up calcing the healing somewhere during the weapon section or, yeah, I ended up calcing the healing here and I kind of realized, oh, wow, yeah, like her healing is actually pretty good, isn't it? Again, retroactively, I probably should have re-recorded a lot of the, the stuff I ended up saying before, but I didn't. I, I should have. That, that's honestly, like, I, I apologize. That was, that was a lazy moment on my end that I shouldn't, I shouldn't do again. Like, I, I gotta make sure I don't do this shit again. ER with C2. So it's like about 38 here, about what, 44 here, like 62 here. It's a decent amount because, I mean, her particle generation to begin with is pretty not great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not bad. I said not great. It's, it's pretty good. I was like, in this case, comparing it to Nahida's particle generation, which like, yeah, it's a lot worse, but it's still a good amount of particles, especially when it comes to Nilo teams that don't really have fixed rotations because it's not like you're really snapshotting anything and like it's it's not like you've got too many things that rely on doing things in a specific order as long as you get Nilo's E out which means that instead of using your E once per rotation you can well you're not you can just decide to not do rotations and use it every 15 seconds whenever it's up right which increases your particle generation obviously because your E cooldown is a bit lower than your burst cooldown okay well, yeah. her white radishes and her white radishes and her burst do damage based on her attack, but I would argue that she doesn't really throw enough of them to ever really make it worth building her attack. Generally, yeah, like, you can get a decent amount of them. At the end of the day, right, if you're if you're spam dashing slash jumping whatever inside of your burst with your E active, you can get like 20 something of them out, which is actually a pretty reasonable amount of damage. But when you like put it into perspective with the kind of damage that you're gonna get from other team members. It's good, but it's just not really that much. It's good enough that if you build her for damage, you're not gonna feel like garbage when you have to swap into her to use her burst to heal. But it's not good enough that you wanna swap into her for the damage that it does, right? If you're playing her in quick and teams, swapping into her is more like, yeah, yeah like I want the healing. But basically like, it's possible for some teams to actually gain DPS. Like some teams that do not rely on her dander application to actually gain DPS from using your burst, but it's only gonna be teams that have carries with very low uptime. It's not that you don't like the attack, it's just, it doesn't matter that much. The we can kind of skip the initial stuff and just go to the ranking at the end and talk about any mistakes that we may have made. Five lands, general best in slot. Yep, very, very definitely. Kitane Cross Spear, okay, free to play, good for Nilo teams. Yeah, although specifically for, for Nilo teams where you use Kandaka. If you don't use her, then there's not that much of a point to the EM you're getting. Moon Piercer. No, yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. Black Tassel, if you just care about the healing, that's fair. But like I said earlier, I don't think that's necessary. The same for Staff of Homa, I guess. But Staff of Homa also has a bit more damage, but also the damage is not that great. Yeah, same for Scarlet Sands, Deathmatch, whatever. Another another weapon option that can be fine, I guess, is the catch. Because most of her damage, if you actually like on-field her with her burst, is considered burst damage. Yeah, that's fine as well, but meh. If anything, I just add like three or four empty spaces between Favonius Lance and the next best option. But there's never a real reason other than not having Favonius Lance to run her on something other than Favonius Lance. Except in Nilo teams where you also use Kondoka. That's kind of it. Depending on which team you play her in, she can go a bunch of different artifact sets. The main one obviously is Four Piece Deepwood. If you don't have another character that can use Four Piece Deepwood, you go Four Piece Deepwood on her. However, if you end up playing her with Kandaka in uh, in Nilo teams, then you can go Four Piece Gilded for the EM. Okay. Yeah, I then didn't say it, so Four Piece Gilded. Thanks to the editor, but yeah, the flop set is better. I kind of just forget that it exists. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like flop would be better for damage than than gilded for sure. And then finally, you can try to go for like a healing set, either four piece class. Did I not mention instructor? Am I dumb? Okay, I didn't mention instructor. So Why did I, I say finally? Either four I'm piece a dumbass. Clam, four piece <laughs> so if we actually take a look at how much she heals for, uh, for context, I hate Hoyo versus warding. It's very inconsistent sometimes. I don't use the same ward. All oh, right, that's why I thought her healing was shit. I forgot what I forgot. I forgot that I had forgot. The reason. The reason why I initially thought her healing was pretty bad is because I didn't realize that she healed the whole party. I thought that in her burst she only healed herself. Like it was only active characters and like in co-op it would also be other active characters but it didn't heal like standby characters. And then I realized wait that's not what happens and that's when I was like oh yeah her healing is a lot better than I thought it was. Her healing is actually <laughs> done sometimes. It's fine. It's fine. It happens.
reasons. Hey, listen, I'm not always right, but I'm also not afraid to admit when I was wrong. <laughs> and I was a ah! dumbass. <laughs> Corby's instructor. It's a it's an okay option, both in Nilo teams and in uh, Aggravate teams. It's never great, but it's never bad. Instructor is better than I gave it credit for here because, again, the healing is very good. The main reason why I had Tenacity generally over Instructor was because Tenacity helps with your healing. It's a five star set, so your base stats are higher and gives you HP, which also helps your healing. But honestly, how much healing a person needs, like, it's so hard to evaluate. Evaluate. Like, I've been playing teams that don't have healers in Abyss for the longest time just because I, like, if I die, I just, you know, like, it's because I fucked up and I start over and I have more fun that way. So it's very hard for me to evaluate how much healing is enough for, like, the average player. And so I kind of have to rely on what other people tell me for stuff like that. And from what I've been told, it seems like most people are actually more than fine with the healing that you get even when you're on Four Piece Instructor. So, Instructor is better than I than I gave it credit for here. Because Instructor gives a bigger buff than Tenacity to most of those teams. So, generally, if you can, you would rather use Instructor than Tenacity. Like, that's, I guess, the main upside to TOM is if you're not going to build for her, like, to act enough ER to get her burst back, if you don't want to use your burst during your rotations and all that, then going TOM so that your, he your E heals a little bit more, well, it's, it's not going to be just a little bit more. It's going to be a decent amount more, especially because a lot of people don't have Instructor pieces with the right main stats because they just feed them because they're four stars then that's a that's a situation where tenacity can be better but instructor can very much be like very good artifact stats you can end up deciding to build her in so many different ways that can yeah. function she's, she's a bit there really are a lot of ways to build her right at the end of the day if you care about the healing just get hp healing bonus whatever make sure you get enough er if you care about the damage well if it's a nilo team give her a bunch of em right if you're using kanaka and otherwise just give her some attack dendro crit usual build and finally teams nilo bloom nice she can be uh, pretty good also in just generally quicken teams outside of that you can use her in hyper bloom but i wouldn't recommend it i don't think her dendro application is good enough to really justify it that was wrong she's a lot better in hyper bloom than i than i thought she was her off field application is not ideal so if you're playing her like with an ayato hyper bloom team or a kokomi hyper bloom team where you really want to have a different unit on field for a large amount of time she's not very good because without her burst she's only applying four hits of dendro per rotation but if you're playing her in a hyper bloom team where you don't have a unit that needs to be on field with her. so for example you're playing em raiden sing so yilan double hydro hyper bloom then you can swap to her and use her burst whenever you want which means that she is actually quite good so for more like quick swap versions of hyper bloom teams she's actually pretty good like she is good and i definitely underestimated her for that when it comes to Burgeon, it's kind of a similar deal with the main difference being that if there are enough enemies, her random targeting can like make up for the relatively low Dendro app. So it's a little bit less meh, but it's still not that great. Yeah, like again, same same idea. In Burgeon teams where you are playing more quick swappy and you have time that you can spend on her, she's actually very, very good. And more importantly, she's a Dendro healer, which means that you don't need to have another healer on your team, right? Because Burgeon has self damage. And a lot of the time, most of the Burgeon teams without her just ended up like not really using a healer. So you'd be stuck with like Toma and an EM Toma, Toma's shield as your only form of defensive utility, which barely outshielded the self damage that you did. So having her definitely is a pretty big upside to that. Honestly, I think I'll actually take a few minutes to show her performance in a few situations in some of those teams. So rather than like focusing too much on like the, the, the time it takes to clear or stuff like that, you can just focus on like the amount of hyper blooms we're getting. So here is like where you get a little bit of downtime because her E's not back up just yet. But after that, you're vibing. All right, and you got more. Oh, I'm dumb. I didn't use her. Oh, I forgot to reuse my hydro stuff. 
I'm ah! up. Like, it's obviously not as much as uh, someone like Nahida would get. But it's really not, like, terrible. And compared to someone like Dender MC or Kole, it's actually pretty good. You can also use her in, like, some other versions of the Hyper Bloom stuff. Like, for example, you can use her in a Hyper Fridge team. So you end up with rotations that are not really... You end up with, like, asynchronous rotations, is what you call them, right? Where you don't really have a rotation, you're kind of just swapping and using her stuff whenever it's up. But it's a, it's pretty solid DPS, like, you're, you're doing, like, more than fine. I can, I guess, compare it to Nahida. Uh, obviously, Nahida's gonna clear faster, but Nahida doesn't have the healing. And so it's really a question of, well, A, Yaya's free, right? Because you could you can get her from the lantern right, uh, although lantern right might be gone by the time this video comes out. But B, like the the, the healing, like it's still it's still very nice to have. Okay, can you not do that? Fucking dies of dies. As you can see, we're like about, I mean, what is this, like 10, 10, 15 seconds faster, but we don't have that healing. Yeah, you can use Cookie instead. Cookie has her own like fair share of issues, mainly that at low constellation, her uptime is pretty bad, especially if you can't like swap back to her whenever her ease up. And also like her, the way that like her AoE hits is being around you kind of forces you to sometimes move to places you don't really want to be, but point being, yeah, it's obviously less damage than Nahida, but like, who isn't? Like, let's be real. So the fact that you get the healing out of it is, it's nice. It's just a very nice thing to get. Another thing I want to show is her in, in Burgeon teams, because I think that's where she shines the most. So we're vibing. This is very fun. I like this a lot.
And you're basically invulnerable, even with all the self damage, because Bertoma's shield plus Tinto's like damage reduction, it gives you basically infinite resistance to interruption, because even though, though Toma's shield isn't tanky, it refreshes every time you, you attack, which means that you almost always have it active. And when you have it active, you have more resistance to interruption, because it's a shield. But yeah, like it, it's overall, like it just, it's very nice. I guess I can also show her in, uh, in a Quicken team. I'm gonna make sure I don't ah! die though. Me, I died. What the fuck is he doing? What? I press Q, I know I press Q, go f*** ah! yourself. I am going to be stuck, aren't I? Okay, never mind. What the, it's not dead? I thought it was dead! How was it not dead? Whatever, it's fine. We can just heal back up anyways. Can I not fucking, it's fine. Sure. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, so this is gonna be a good place to show it. I don't really need the healing, so I'm just gonna swap out. I am dumb. That's fine. Why do you gotta be cringe, man? Whatever. <laughs> Why do you gotta be cringe? If I had instructor, she, he would have died there, but whatever. Now, all this to say, Yayo just performs pretty well overall, so that's good. You can build her for Bloom stuff with Kandaka, and that's like, okay. Yeah, okay, it's... so for that, I don't have Nilo on this account, so I can't show. But from the testing that I've done, the rotations with Nilo, Yao Yao, Nahida, Kandaka are a lot easier to do than the ones where you use Kokomi. And I was getting better results than with Kokomi. So, I mean, that's a good thing, right? We take those, that, that is nice. I didn't test with a C0 Kandaka though. So it, it was a C6 one. And I would say that like overall, like, yeah, it's actually, it's, it's worth trying. It's pretty good. But at C0, it's still very good. And it's, we finally have one team where she's not garbage. Like you have a solid argument to use her over Kokomi or over another like option like she is actually good there uh, the reason why she's good is because uh, the way that you have your AOE application and the way that you give your Yao Yao AOE application it's very nice just a solid amount of AOE hydro application and it's pretty good and if you don't need the healing because Yao Yao provides you so much healing then she's just a pretty good option probably not the Nilo team I'd recommend if you're using Nilo yeah I mean honestly I'd say that after having tested it it's a good Nilo team obviously because 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 you're playing units that have lower like scalings on themselves you get punished even more when you're not in aoe content and when you can't 
like take advantage of the bloom and the way that bloom scales in AoE. But when you are in AoE, it is very it, it is very good. And yeah, um, that is one of the teams where you actually want to build full EM on uh, on Yaya because with Kundaka's Hydro Infusion, Yaya will be triggering blooms. Basically, all of those options have their pros. The main one that I'll I would consider to be the best is probably building her like as a low investment healer option with like either instructor or tenacity for sprint teams or just full healing build in Nilo teams. Yeah, okay, so I do expect her to be probably most popular as either a damage focused unit in spread teams or just as the low investment healer build. So you definitely don't need to go full healing in the in the Nilo teams. She's not Sumeru, she, she's she's Leah and that's why she's good. True. True. <laughs> no, True. I, I expect her to unironically probably be the best for Sardendro for a while. Yeah, that's fair. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, I, I'd say that this was probably like a four out of 10 re-release. I'd say the, the, the second half was like an eight out of 10. The first half was like a zero out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely could have been better, but all in all, like, Yao is a very good unit. Right? The conclusion stays the same. She is very good. She's one of the best units we've had in Sumeru because, well, obviously, she's a healer. She's not as focused on damage as the damage dealers that we've had, but with her healing considered, depending on how much you, like, as a player, need the healing, I think there's a fair argument to be made that for a lot of people, she would be the second best unit released in Sumeru after Nahida. Really, really depending on how much you need that healing. Obviously, if you don't need the healing then she probably wouldn't be. I try to adjust my perception of units based on what I expect the average player to want. So I'd say that she's pretty close up there at the very least. Uh, she's very, very good. She's not necessary, but getting her from Lantern Rite or just getting her just in general, like it's it's definitely not something you're unhappy with. She generally won't make your teams deal more damage, but she will provide you a lot of defensive utility. And compared to the other options like Dendro MC, you're not really paying much to get that defensive utility. You're kind of just getting it for free, which is nice because it's not really a downgrade in terms of output. It can be in some situations, but very often, and it's a side grade and in some situations even an upgrade but yeah so that does it for the post release as usual leave a like subscribe all that shit uh, make sure you stay tuned we're, we're gonna do the day of pre-release soon i'm not looking forward to that but hey subscribe if you want to see that soon i'm gonna try my best to not be too pessimistic <laughs> yeah no promises anyways bye youtube